the crisis in Yugoslavia. Many decades have passed since those events took place, which tore the country of Yugoslavia apart and spawned six countries in its place. Let's go back to 1985. Imagine, if you will, that you're a Serbian farmer in Yugoslavia. The beer you just finished is laying beside you, empty. You're bored and feeling a little frisky, so you experiment a little. You have a bottle-shaped object and, with some effort, a bottle-shaped hole within you, if you believe hard enough. <laughs> Fast forward a bit and you can't get it out. You panic and call an ambulance. They take you into the nearest hospital and naturally ask you, how in the hell did this happen? Now, do you A. Lie about the event B. Make up a story about being attacked by minorities C. Inadvertently cause the collapse of the Yugoslav state or D. All of the above This is the ridiculous story of Djorde Martinovic and the so-called Djorde Martinovic incident. So, what happened, exactly? Well, when our hero Martinovic arrived at the local hospital, his story was that two Albanian-speaking men had attacked him while he was tending to his field, claiming he was roughed up and then had a beer bottle shoved into his rectum. When the Yugoslav, Yugoslav People's, People's Army... Investigated, however, Martinovic admitted to the colonel that he in fact was the one that did it to himself. To quote the public record of the investigation, In conclusion, he, Martinovic, put a beer bottle on a wooden stick and stuck it into the ground. After that, he sat on the bottle and enjoyed. End quote. Leaders within Martinovich's local community, too, deemed it accidental consequences of a self-induced sexual practice. But the public wasn't satisfied. The crime was too ghastly, too grotesque. Surely something else must be afoot. Let's pull back a bit, though. Why did they care so much? Well, Yugoslavia was a beautiful and multi-ethnic tapestry woven in the south of Europe. As it stood, ethnic relations were stable but could easily be disturbed by, say, someone claiming Albanians grabbed him and shoved a bottle up his ass. Saying that, clearly I think tensions weren't all that stable if that's all it took. As a result of this nuance, the case was elevated from the local courts of the scenic city of Gilan to the capital city of Yugoslavia, Belgrade. His case was reviewed in the Military Medical Academy, at the time the most prestigious medical institute in all of Yugoslavia. In accordance with the Yugoslav political policy of brotherhood and unity, a multi-ethnic team of top doctors from Serbia, Croatia, Slovenia, and Macedonia, representing four out of the six republics of Yugoslavia, was brought together. Their findings stunned the nation. They claimed, contrary to Martinovic's admission, that his injuries were caused by, and I quote, a strong, brutal, and sudden insertion or jamming of a 500 milliliter bottle, or rather, its wider end, into the rectum. This could only have been carried out by at least two or more individuals, end quote. Fearing a political crisis, the case was further elevated to a commission led by Professor Dr. Janis Milchinski, seemingly an expert in the field. How exactly one becomes an expert in these matters is beyond me, but an expert nonetheless. His team brought the conclusion that Martinovich could have inserted the bottle by positioning it on a stick, which he had pushed into the earth, but had slipped during masturbation and broke the bottle in his rectum under the force of his body's weight. As if this couldn't get any more ridiculous, the Yugoslav leadership put the secret police on the case. The secret police, themselves feeling out of their element, got military intelligence involved. This was now a national matter. I find it funny to imagine that this was most likely discussed at an emergency Politburo meeting in between economic and military matters. Once the secret archives were declassified in the 90s, it came out that the secret police's investigation concluded that it was indeed self-inflicted. In a twist, our hero Martinovich actually recanted his confession later, claiming that he had received promises from the government in return for a favorable answer from his side. His son told the press that Albanian nationalists targeted him simply because he was a Serb. Hilariously, when researching this, I didn't see any evidence of the supposed Albanian nationalists being described, ID'd, or even searched for. You'd think you would get at least a glimpse of the two dudes that shoved a bottle up your ass, but oh well. Serbian media went crazy with the story. For decades, the Yugoslav government played down and censored nationalist rhetoric as part of their brotherhood and unity policy, and this was one of the first major incidents of this rule being publicly broken. Serbian press flooded with anti-Albanian sentiment. 
One major newspaper claimed that a local Albanian family attacked Martinovic because he refused to sell his land to them. This was seen as a symptom of a much larger Albanian offensive to push Serbs out of Kosovo, with Martinovic's bottle antics front and center. Racism played its part, with Serbian press paralleling Albanians to Turks and the policies of the Ottomans. Even poetry was written about it. <clears throat> with a broken bottle on a stake, as though through a lamb but alive, they went through Djorde Martinovic, as if with their first and heavy steps into their future field they treaded. When out of opium and pain, Djorde Martinovic came round, as if from the long past Turkish times, he woke up on a stake. Truly moving. To make this even more ridiculous, somehow, Martinovic was further elevated, nearly to saint status. He was taken as an archetype of Serbian suffering at the hands of Albanian-slash-Turkish evil. Parallels of Martinovic's fictional attack were drawn to the suffering of those in the concentration camps, and one notable Serbian painter even painted Martinovic as a crucified suffering saint at the hands of Albanians, with bottles in hand. Serbian intellectuals, writers, and artists signed a statement stating, the case of Djorde Martinovic has become that of the entire Serb nation in Kosovo. Later, Serbian women marched on the parliament, demanding the removal of Kosovo's autonomy. And I remind you, because some bored farmer stuck a bottle up his ass. Not to be outdone, though, the Serbian Association of Writers took it as a cause of their own by bringing it to the Ministry of Defense and the Serbian president. So, to summarize, the police, the military, the medical community of Yugoslavia, the secret police, and practically entire political structures of constituent republics of Yugoslavia got involved because of our dear hero Martinovic. To put the magnitude of this in place, official histories written on the Yugoslav Wars, and in particular the mid-80s era of Yugoslavia, specifically mention this incident as if it's a significant event akin to student protests or US foreign policy initiatives against Yugoslavia. The mess that followed was a complex list of small skirmishes, nationalist speeches, independence referendums, and UN meetings. The horror of the Yugoslav Wars shouldn't be forgotten, nor the nationalist poison that led to the death of a great nation. With that being said, though, that doesn't mean we can't laugh at the eternal stupidity of Jurde Martinovic, who shoved a bottle up his ass and tore his country apart in the process. Maybe his rectum, too. Just remember, no matter what you do in life, it'd be pretty hard to fuck up more than that. And that's it for this time. Much shorter than usual, but I'm trying something new. Let me know what you think, and if you'd like to see more of this silly stuff in the future.